Good morning, welcome to this update from Phoenix Blue on Friday the 9th of September. I'm Tom Colley and I'll talk to you about the news and the markets. Um, and let's start over with the news. Um, yesterday the big news was the um, ECB minimum bid rate announcement and the ECB press conference. Um, now what came out of this was basically nothing changed. We've got the same minimum bid rate and we were also looking for um, potentially an increase or extension in terms of time frame on the current QE quantitative easing program. Um, we haven't seen that. Um, nothing was added. It was indicated that the um, ability to extend or increase um, the uh, stimulus was um, available to the ECB and they were willing to use it when they um, deemed it necessary. Um, but however, nothing uh, really, basically very much a status quo um, through that announcement and the subsequent press conference and questions afterwards. Um, at the same time, 1.30 yesterday afternoon, we also had um, some positive US dollar in unemployment claim numbers in. We came in at uh, a, an in, sorry, a, the number of unemployment claims in decreasing to 259,000 um, from the forecast of 264. Then a little bit later on we had um, a massive figure um, or a massive change in the figure on crude oil inventories. Um, we were forecasting uh, the inventories to be 0.6 million. They came in at minus 14.5 million. Now, that would be a hugely dramatic number if it wasn't for the fact that there is a reason or that for the majority of that difference, which is the um, hurricanes in the Gulf preventing ships docking um, with imported oil um, and also to a certain extent having effect on the US oil um, output. But even taking those into account, that was a very much a bullish number for gold, uh, sorry, for crude, and we'll have a look at that in, in a moment. But just to re-emphasize, although that's massive, it isn't, um, there is a reason, uh, in this case, the weather, which led to that. Looking ahead to today, uh, all we have out uh, of significant news is the employment change and the employment rate, or sorry, the unemployment rate on the Canadian dollar. So what did we see from the news yesterday? Well, here's the dollar index. And before the uh, ECB announcement, we had the price really down um, towards the bottom of this or this lower side of the triangle. Um, we had a push down through the, uh, the beginning of the press conference. But then through the afternoon, um, price recovered strongly and closed basically at $95, which is the key level through here. You can see it's also the point of control through that triangle. Um, we'll be looking for a break above 95 for a, con a confirmation of short-term um, dollar strength. We'll then be looking for a break outside of the triangle um, for a medium term in the dollar strength. At the end of the day, to have a real dollar strength picture, we need to be breaking above this trend line, which we previously used as the top side of a bigger triangle. We need to break through that, and that will certainly, I would suggest, take um, a rake hike from the Fed. Um, the Fed are due, I think, the week after next to announce the next rate. Um, the way the figures that we had out um, earlier this week and the back... Was it earlier this week? Yes, this is the, the figure, the big down movement here we had on Tuesday. Um, that's really uh, put us in this sort of lower position on the dollar here. Um, but we that also means that the likelihood of a success... Uh, September rate rise uh, is distinctly lower than it was so potentially we will still be waiting for the end of the year and we might be waiting that long for this level to break um, if that was to play out in that way. Uh, this is the yen um, again we're below a trend line here and um, we're also below a horizontal um, this probably indicates um, Bank of Japan intervention 
Um, we had clear intervention at 100. You can't see it on this chart, but on smaller time frames through the uh, when we had the announcement on the Brexit vote, um, we clearly had an intervention at 99 and 100. And then we've seen intervention potentially more subtly through this level here but clearly 100 is the critical point to the downside um, but if we get that dollar strength we should see price play out, play out to the long side but certainly on terms of trading on the uh, the daily chart um, I'll be looking for this 104 level to be broken in order for um, to be truly bullish um, this marketplace which as you're aware means uh, yen weakness. Over on the euro, we saw exactly the opposite of the dollar index. We saw ahead and through the early parts of the uh, press conference, euro price surge up to the top of this uh, trend line here, uh, and then price fell away as um, we the uh, results of the press conference or what came out was very very limited we actually took an intraday trade through this level yesterday we took profits off the table uh, i pulled my stop down to this the stop of this other entry i've got in here so i was stopped out um with secondary profits on uh taken at that point there so i'd had money off the table stop at break even and then overnight i'd pulled my stop down to that level um so i'd locked in a little bit more profit as i say we've still got this entry in here which is effectively an end of day entry um when we placed the entry it was based on uh, the previous day's bar uh, a break of the low of that but that's ostensibly also the break of the low of the um high test bar we saw yesterday so we, we we are looking for more downside in this market we haven't had it yet um, it may take till Monday for that to, or next week for that to play through a uh, very similar position position on the Aussie um, popped up's given us a really clear upper trend line on this there are a few levels through here they're not brilliant levels um, I would be looking at potentially trading these levels um, next week if we see dollar strength play out but either reduce risk or on an intraday basis as I say because um, if you look back here the breaks on the longer term uh, through these levels are quite significant um, so I don't consider them um, daily levels or for trading purposes okay onwards from there we also saw gold we uh we got in gold uh, at this trend line this is the weekly chart um with a weekly or a monthly trend line that's 2000 mid 2011 high a touch there and then through here in its own right on that daily chart there's a clear a very very clear trend line there anyway so we use price action through here intraday yesterday we got short this market we've had money off the table um the um we'd re overnight we'd reduced the stop um looking at the chart there um i'll be moving my stop now to break even our target is not uh overly ex um extravagant we're looking for a level through here to take profits a lot of that is because today's friday if we were in earlier in the week we potentially would be targeting this level here um, but so far today that appears since the in the last hour since i produced this slide um, we have seen more downside in that market so that's turned into a nice trade we mentioned um the crude um stock figures that came out or the crude inventory that came out of the states um and the effect that that had had on crude oil we saw a bullish move on that it was mitigated by um the market knowing that that figure was likely due to the weather but what's interesting here on this weekly chart is we've got a clear weekly trend line through here um we've got a level at the 49 dollar um big number here and We've obviously got a point where these intersect, so this is going to be a very interesting point if and when we reach it, be it next week or whatever, to see where the price um, 
respects that level and comes back to the downside or whether we see a break above that and a retest and that will give us um, some significant bias in this marketplace that's been incredibly difficult to read and news driven recently um, but I think that's a clear technical level um, that we can um, rely on to a certain extent and um, look for a, uh, a shorter term view to the downside or to the continued upside we had previously watched the $50 level it's still a big number it's still one that we'd want to have a, a trade to the long side with our stops at break even and some money off the table before we got to $50 in an ideal world um, but even so the 49 level seems more significant to me there the other um, commodities market that we um, are interested in we've been interested in this for a couple of weeks now um a lot of the reason behind this is seasonality one of the uh it's a se it's seasonally strong it's a would be a longer term trade it's seasonally strong through to mid-december um in terms of average gain in that period we'd be looking at a, uh, in the three eights as a target for that so we can see a significant um profit potential but a longer term um buy and hold type trade um this is the weekly chart in order to show you that the 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 big trade will be the break of this uh, 297 level here pullback retest um and that's a significant level and and that would be something we'd be looking to hold um for a couple of months uh, however uh, last night we also took a trade on the daily bar which was an engulfing bar we can get um our profits at about one to one off the table and our stops to break even before we meet this we reach this high at 297 we won't make a great deal of money in that but it will mean that we've already got money on the table should that be broken if it doesn't and price pulls back down no loss because we've got no risk left on the table so that's a classic um phoenix blue type trade where we um, would go into a significant level that we expect to break or have the potential to break but without any risk on the table um, if it does break we've got the profit so we've got money on the table we're then looking for a pullback with no risks and we can place a full order in again on top of that so effectively we've got one and a half um, orders going forward Okay, uh, guys, if you like, if, if you're new to Phoenix Blue and you like what you've seen there, um, we've got a new event uh, or next event, four hours free trading with our two top fund managers in London, September the 23rd. If you'd like to attend, it's totally free of charge. You can ask as many questions as you like. Obviously, find out a lot more about how we trade, how we use levels on charts, on, but don't use lagging like, indicators, how we do the cot analysis that we do, how we do season seasonal analysis and how we take uh, our fundamental analysis into account so a, a lot to be gained from coming there on that day if you are interested just pop on the website go to events and this is the page you'll see and click through there and that will allow you to leave your details in order for us to send you um, a formal information and all the joining instructions for the event okay guys so the end of another trading week um, that's the um, first full week in September it's been volatile and interesting um, let's um, have a good day today uh, caution friday is always a day when um the market tends to consolidate take profits and things like that and look forward to next week having done our uh, full analysis of all the markets over the weekend okay take care thanks for listening